Well, it looks like five o'clock to me, as best I can see it. So we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order, please. James City County Wetlands Board. Protocol requires that I read a couple of paragraphs for you. The responsibility of this board is to carry out locally the Commonwealth policy to preserve the wetlands and to accommodate economic activity so as to prevent their desplatation. Our public hearings will be managed by these rules. The outline for tonight's public hearing will be a staff presentation followed by any questions or clarifications from the board. Then the public hearing will be opened. At that time, anyone wishing to speak may do so once called upon by the chair. All public speakers must state their name, address for the record. After everybody who wishes to speak have done so, the public hearing will be closed and discussion among the board will start. I have a roll call, please, Ms. Pierman. Mr. Roadley? Here. Mr. Waltrip? Here. Mr. O'Brien? Here. Mr. Apperson? Here. And Mr. Dunn? Here. Any questions with the minutes, corrections, additions? Yes, Everything look okay? Fine, we'll move on to first case then, which will be presented by Mr. Long, WJPA 21-0027, 10,016 Sycamore Landing and 10,020 Sycamore Landing. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Trevor Long, James City County Watershed Planner, here present WJPA 21-0027. Mr. Daniel Winnall, Water's Edge Construction, has applied for a wetlands permit on behalf of Mr. Richard Costello and Ms. Nina Costello and Mr. John Davidson, Jr. and Ms. Laura Davidson to install an offshore sill with beach nourishment and repair a riprap revetment on properties located at 10016 Sycamore Landing Road and 10020 Sycamore Landing Road, both properties within the York River watershed. The applicants are proposing to repair an existing 140 linear foot riprap revetment at the toe of the existing slope to gain structural integrity to the bank using class three riprap. Additionally, the applicants are proposing to install a 100 linear foot offshore sill to include beach nourishment to the two properties. Areas within this beach nourishment will be planted with Spartina alterna flora and Spartina patens. This project is being done in conjunction with shoreline stabilization projects at 10006 Sycamore Landing Road and 10010 Sycamore Landing Road. Both of these projects were approved by the James City County Wetlands Board earlier in this year. The applicants have expressed that timber mats will be used in all access areas to avoid impacting existing vegetated wetlands. There are no vegetated wetland impacts proposed with this project. However, approximately 1,500 square feet of non-vegetated wetland impacts are anticipated. As published in the Virginia Register on July 11, 2005, the Virginia Mitigation Compensation Policy and Supplemental Guidelines, Regulation 4 VAC 20-390-10, Virginia, as a Chesapeake Bay program partner, is committed to achieve a no net loss of existing wetlands acreage and function in the signatory's regulatory programs. In order for a proposed project to be authorized to impact wetlands and compensate for the wetland loss in some prescribed manner, the following three criteria must be met. All reasonable mitigative efforts, including alternative siting, which would eliminate or minimize wetland loss or disturbance, must be incorporated in the proposal. The proposal must clearly be water dependent in nature, and the proposal must demonstrate clearly its need to be in the wetlands and its overwhelming public and private benefits. If the proposed project cannot meet one or more of the above criteria, the project must be denied or must occur in areas outside of the wetlands. Should it satisfy all three criteria, however, compensation for the wetland loss is required. The sequence of acceptable mitigation options should be as follows. On-site, off-site within the same watershed, mitigation banks in the same watershed, or a payment in lieu of fee. If compensation is required, it should be a condition of this permit. Staff has reviewed this application and finds that this project meets the three criteria outlined above. There are, no, there are no anticipated vegetated wetland impacts associated with the proposed project. Staff has reviewed the above application and recommends approval of the application as presented. Should the board wish to approve the application, staff suggests the following conditions be incorporated into its approval. The applicants must obtain all other necessary local, state, and or federal permits as required for the project. All development activities located in the special flood hazard area shall comply with Article 6, Division 3, floodplain area regulations of the James City County Zoning Ordinance and receive all required approval 
and permits prior to the commencement of such activities. That a surety of $1,000 be paid and in place prior to commencement of work and a form acceptable to the GMC County Attorney's Office to guarantee the no net uh, wetland loss policy of Virginia. And this wetlands permit shall expire on July 14th, 2024 if construction has not begun with extensions for this permit written um, to and submitted to the Stormwater and Resource Protection Division no later than June 2nd, 2024, just six weeks prior to the expiration date of this permit. I'll divert your attention to the screen for a brief presentation. Again, uh, WJPA 21-0027 at 10016 and 10020 Sycamore Landing Road uh, to install um, an offshore sill with beach nourishment and to repair an existing revetment. The parcel is outlined here in blue within the Sycamore Landing Road and subdivision. An aerial photograph of the two properties outlined here also in blue. Topography as it affects these two sites, as you can see, um, you know, steep sloping banks down towards the water. The floodplain as it affects this property. And a site plan that has been submitted for this project. The um, property line demarcated here in black. The re revetment repair in yellow along the shoreline. The offshore sill occurring here with beach nourishment acting in between the two. This first red line being mean low water, and the second one closest to the land being mean high water. A cross section of the proposed um, wetlands project, a revetment here in yellow with beach nourishment in green, and the offshore sill here in yellow as well. Some site photographs. Uh, looking towards um, the adjacent property, the existing revetment uh, that is beginning to fail, so this area is to be repaired. Looking back towards the second property and out towards the area of beach nourishment and offshore sill. Again, staff does recommend approval of this, should the board wish to approve it as well. Um, a couple conditions that staff has recommended. Applicants must obtain all other necessary local, state, and or federal permits as required. All development activities located in the special flood area shall comply with the James City County Zoning Ordinance. That a surety of $1,000 to ensure the beach nourishment plantings be paid prior to the uh, start of work. And this wetlands uh, permit shall expire on July 14th, 2024, if construction has not begun with that, by that time, with an extension um, requested no later than June 2nd, 2024, which is six weeks prior to its expiration date. Thank you very much. I'd be happy to answer any questions the board may have. Questions for Mr. Long? Uh, Mr. Long, um, can you remind me of the status of our ordinance with respect to the changes that were put in place by VMR or by the General Assembly and then subsequently VMRC with the adoption of revisions to the wetlands guidelines? Uh, I could get back with you on it. Because um, my, my question was geared towards how does this project fit within that framework? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would, I could certainly get back with you on how this would tie into it. Questions? If not, thank you. Yeah, we do have a representative from VMRC. Perfect. We're here to comment when the public hearing opens, right? That's probably a good point. This time I'd like to open the public hearing on this case. Anyone wishing to speak to this permit, please come forward and identify yourself. Good evening. Ben Nettleton with VMRC. So do you want to repeat your question just for the record? One more time? Um, the question was merely has the changes to the law and the subsequent adoption of the revisions to the wetland guidelines been fully adopted by James City County at this point? And if so, how does this project fit within that framework? Right. So the, the new guidelines were adopted at the May 2021 uh, VMRC commission meeting. 
And those just kind of reflected the, the law changes of July 1st of last year that the Commonwealth should not approve any, li any projects besides living shorelines for erosion control unless the best available science says otherwise. Um, in this case, we would uh, count a sill with fill and plantings as a living shoreline, so it would meet that criteria and that mandate. And just for the record, if, if the best available science was not supporting a living shoreline, for example, the fetch was too high, there were structures in place or, or their structures, the, the order of preference would go to a breakwater or riprap revetment, and then the last option preferable would be a bulkhead, only in absolutely necessary cases. So, uh, but yes, we would consider this a living shoreline by our definitions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wish to speak, please? Mr. Winall. Good evening. My name is Danny Winall with Water's Edge Construction. I'm the agent for the, for the owner and also the contractor on the project. And I'm just here to answer any questions y'all may have. How long has the uh, government been in place, the one that's failing now? Uh, since about 2000, prior to Isabel. Add the spacing for the Spartina that you plug back in. What spacing do you use on that? Usually the core offers guidance in that, generally two foot on center, sometimes 18 inches on center. Core sets, sets that rule. Um, usually that we haven't got a core permit for this project yet. We're still waiting on that. So I'm sure they'll have that condition in place. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Other questions? Um, Danny, the pictures didn't do a great job. I assume the, the revetment is slumping. Is that it's losing the toe its toe? The revetment is slumping a little bit. Yeah. The upland, up at elevation eight to nine, it's doing pretty good shape, but the toe the existing substrate is, is eroded a lot in that area, so it caused the toe to fail, and a couple big storms just came through and just caused. But, uh, so the whole revetment won't have to be redone. It's just that we plan on get, digging the toe out and, and reinforcing the toe, and that's the main. And the sand fill will basically uh, match the existing elevation at the toe? Uh, the beach nourishment will be a little higher. A little higher. I think whatever showed on the drawings, I think plus two, plus, I can't remember. Thank you. So there's two lots there. You're you're going to do <coughs> the other lot, too. We're just doing a little bit over on Mr. Costello's side because his pier is like five feet away from the property line. So we, we decided to run the, the sill all the way over to his pier. Because actually, the originally, some of the riprap is over, went over on Costello's side. It was a joint permit application with that project too. So we're just matching the way it was originally. So it's only, I think it's, it's like 10 feet on the Costello side. But Mr. Davison's, you know, taking care of all of that. The, the uh, revetment repair seems necessary. Is it adequate? Meaning uh, what's the purpose of the sill? Uh, the sill, I mean, to provide beach nourishment out in front it's eroded a lot out in front of that revetment. So we put the sill out there and put the beach nourishment in. It'll protect that area in front, and it'll turn it from a non-vegetated to a vegetated intertidal area once we put the plantings in. So you're fairly confident that that beach field will stay? Yeah. With even the though sill. it can... Yeah, I think the sill's plus three, so yeah, it'll stay. Wouldn't, wouldn't come out the sides? Well, we're, it's in conjunction with two other projects next door. We've got the, the Amazon project next door and the Lambie. So it's three. It's a total fetch of about 300 feet there. So when you do all three of them, it locks it in pretty good. I think the windows will be less than 75 feet apart. So if it were a, just a single project, yeah, that may be an issue on one end. We may have to come up with a different design. But since it's three projects side by side, we can do the lateral sills or the parallel sills, and they work pretty good. Thank y'all. Anyone else wish to speak, please? If not, we'll close the public hearing. And, uh, no comments, Mr. Chairman. Sir? No comments. Okay. Are we ready to vote? Does anyone want to make a motion? Chairman, I move or make a motion that we adopt the resolution to grant the permit for Wetlands Board case WJPA 21-0027 at 10016 Sycamore Landing Road and 1 Zero zero two zero Sycamore Landing Road. Mr. 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 Vote, please. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rodley. Yes. Mr. Waltrip. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. 
Yes. Mr. Afferson? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. The motion carries. You're in business, Mr. Winnell. Thank you, sir. Moving on under board considerations, I see we have a presentation here from Ms. Pierman. Yeah, I thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, for the benefit of the public, my name is Liz Parman, and I'm Assistant County Attorney here in James City. Um, as you know, the Wetlands Board adopted a policy in 2009 that requires applicants wanting to construct non-commercial open pile piers or structures to come before this board to get a permit. Um, recent, we've had several recent cases before the board regarding this policy, and that prompted the county attorney to reevaluate um, this, this policy. Uh, county Code Section 22.3 sets forth a series of uses that are permitted on wetlands by right, including the construction of private non-commercial structures such as piers. Um, we reviewed some attorney, uh, sought out some attorney general opinions. There was one that specifically addressed um, th this, these permitted structures, and the attorney general determined that under a local wetland zoning ordinance, a private pier is a use of right and therefore exempt from the application and permit procedure of that particular ordinance. Um, so based on language in the county code, the authorizing statute in the Virginia code, and also on this attorney general's opinion, uh, the county attorney, attorney's office recommends that this board rescind its policy on non-commercial open pile structures to no longer require a permit from this board. Um, a resolution accomplishing that task is attached for your consideration, and I'm certainly happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions from anyone? Just to refresh the board's mind, that um, <clears throat> when that policy was enacted, it was not so much for the construction of the pier, but for potential impacts associated, with, not for the pier itself, but potential impacts associated with the construction. Um, I have no issue with the uh, a resolution to I whatsoever. I abandon totally, that policy. I totally agree. That's, uh, yeah, the less regulations that are already spelled out, the better, in my opinion. Yes. Yes, indeed. Are we ready to uh, vote on this, on this resolution? Would someone would like to make a motion, please? I will make a motion that we adopt fully the recommendations of the James City County Attorney on the, the uh, County regulations on the build establishment of open pile piers. And you can fill it in the way that you want it there for the correct terminology, but we know what we're voting on. Okay. And I'm sorry that I mispronounced your last name. I'm sorry. That's all right, Mr. Apperson. And I've heard your motion. I'll do the roll call. Mr. Rodley? Yes. Mr. Waltrip? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Apperson? Yes. And Mr. Dunn? Yes. Okay. And the board has rescinded its policy requiring a permit on open pile, non commercial open pile structures. Thank you. Thank you. According to my itinerary here, we're finished with uh, special privileges. Anyone have anything they'd like to bring up? Anything from Mr. Wilson from the county staff? Special privileges? Motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Meeting adjourned. All right. Call to order. Uh, the responsibility of this board is to carry out locally the Commonwealth policy to preserve correction we'll continue <laughs> the responsibility of this board is to carry out locally the commonwealth policy to protect against and minimize pollution and deposition of sediment in wetlands streams and lakes in james city county which are tributaries of the chesapeake bay um, one other um, protocol that i need to read for tonight is the outline for tonight's public hearing will be a staff presentation followed by any questions or clarifications from the board then the public hearing will be opened at that time, anybody wishing to speak may do so once called upon by the chair. All public speakers must state their name and address for the record. After everyone wishing to speak have done so, the public hearing will be closed and discussion amongst the board will start. Uh, can we please uh, have the roll call? Mr. Rodley? Here. Mr. Waltrip? Mr. Mr. O'Brien? Here. Mr. Apperson? Here. Mr. Dunn? Here. Everyone's had an opportunity to review the minutes. Is there any changes or corrections? None. Minutes are accepted. Uh, we'll begin the public hearings with a presentation from Ms. Benedict concerning CBPA 21 Tech 0064 at 101 Abigail Lane. Good 
Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Robin Benedict. I'm a James City County watershed planner. Today I'll be presenting CBPA 21-0064. Mr. Jesse McHose, Extra Miles Landscape, has applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception on behalf of Ms. Susan Maida for encroachments into the RPA buffer for the construction of a retaining wall on property located at 101 Abigail Lane within the Kingsmill subdivision and the College Creek watershed. The parcel was platted in 1981 prior to the adoption of the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance in 1990. The total lot size of this property is 0.46 acres, of which 70% is located within the, within the RPA. The applicant is proposing to construct a retaining wall to the rear of the existing house, equating to approximately 105 square feet of impacts to the landward 50-foot RPA. The applicant has expressed concerns regarding erosion behind the house and proposed a retaining wall to protect the property. It should be noted that the retaining wall shall be constructed on the owner's property unless permission is granted from the adjacent property owner. County mitigation requirements for the proposed amount of impervious impacts to the RPA equates to the planting of three shrubs. Staff has evaluated the application and exception request for the construction of a retaining wall. This application meets the ordinance conditions in sections 23-11 and 23-14 and should be heard by the board because the construction of a retaining wall is considered accessory in nature. The board may grant exceptions to section 23-7 if the application meets the following five conditions. The exception request is the minimum necessary to afford, excuse me, to afford relief. Granting the exception will not confer upon the applicants any special privileges denied by Chapter 23, Chesapeake Bay Preservation of the James City County Code to other property owners similarly situated in the vicinity. The exception request will be in harmony with the purpose and intent of Chapter 23 of the James City County Code and is not of substantial detriment to water quality. The exception request is not based on conditions or circumstances that are self-created or self-imposed nor does the request arise from conditions or circumstances, either permitted or non-conforming, that are related to adjacent parcels. Reasonable and appropriate conditions are imposed which will prevent the exception request from causing a degradation of water quality. Staff has reviewed the application and exception request and has determined the impacts associated with the proposal to be minor for, for the proposed development. Staff recommends approval for this exception request and if the board wishes to approve this request, Staff recommends the following conditions be incorporated into the approval. The applicant must obtain all other necessary federal, state, and local permits as required for the project, including a building permit if necessary. The submittal of a mitigation plan equating to three shrubs be submitted to the Stormwater and Resource Protection Division. A surety of $250 be submitted in a form acceptable to the James City County Attorney's Office to guarantee the mitigation plantings. This exception request approval shall become null and void if construction has not begun by July 14, 2022. And written requests for an extension to the exception shall be submitted to the Stormwater and Resource Protection Division no later than June 2, 2022, which is six weeks prior to the expiration date. Now, if you'll please turn your attention to the screen for a brief presentation. Again, this is for CBPA 21-0064 from Ms. Susan Maida at 101 Abigail Lane for the construction of a retaining wall. Here you can see the parcel surrounded in blue. Again, this is part of the Kingsmill subdivision and, um, all right, and the College Creek watershed. The project um, parcel is surrounded in blue and the retaining wall would be built behind the house. It shows the topography. You can see it's fairly flat at the front of the house, but you start to see where the erosion has hit behind the house. The resource protection area encompasses most of the building on this parcel. Here's the site plan submitted. The RPA comes before the front of the house and the retaining wall will be built behind here. It's the yellow bar. This is a diagram of the retaining wall, how it will be built. Here you can see where the homeowner has already tried to 
eliminate some of the effects of the erosion by installing their own pipes. This is behind an existing structure on the property, which is starting to also become affected by erosion. And here you can see where real erosion is starting to affect the, the back of her property as well. For this, the staff recommends all other necessary local, state, and federal permits be obtained, a mitigation plan consisting of three shrubs be submitted, a surety of $250 to guarantee plantings be submitted, and this exception request approval shall become null and void if construction has not begun by July 14th, 2022, and a written request for extension shall be submitted no later than June 2nd, 2022. And at this point, I'll accept any questions from the board. Questions? Thank you. Okay, we'll now open the public hearing for uh, any comments. Um, just a reminder, if you uh, would wish to speak, please state your name and address for the record. Okay. We will close the public hearing and uh, open, the, open to the board for discussion. Mr. Chairman, what I see in the slides there, there's certainly walls needed there. There's the backyards is going washing away from them. Something's got to be done there. Any other comments from the board? Anything else for discussion? Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt the resolution to grant the exception for Chesapeake Bay Board case CBPA 21-0064 at 101 Abigail Lane. Mr. Rodley? Yes. Mr. Waltrip? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Apperson? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. The motion carries. The next hearing, CBPA 21-0083 at 114 Constant Avenue. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, Trevor Long, Watershed Planner. Ms. Brittany Holstein of A Solution has requested a deferral of this application uh, for the exception to the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance while the site plan is being finalized for this project. Staff concurs with this request at this case. As this case has been public noticed, staff recommends that the public hearing be opened and stay opened until the August meeting, at which time the case will be heard. Okay, so we just open, open it up for the public hearing? Yes, sir. And then we'll leave it open uh, until August, and then we'll hear, hear the case at that time. Okay. So... Uh, we open the public hearing and leave it open. Thank you very much. Move on to the next case. All right. Um, next case, CBPA 21-0087, 1007 Sycamore Landing Road. Mr. Long. <clears throat> Afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Trevor Long, Watershed Planner, here represents CBPA 21-0087. Mr. Harold Breeden has applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception for encroachments into the RPA buffer for the addition of fill material on property located at 10007 Sycamore Landing Road within the Ware Creek watershed. This parcel was platted in 1957 prior to the adoption of the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance in 1990. Total lot size of this property is 1.53 acres, of which 69% is located within the RPA. There is a shoreline erosion project permitted by the James City County Wetlands Board and Chesapeake Bay Board occurring on this same street. The applicant is proposing to utilize the fill dirt associated with the shoreline erosion project to fill approximately 2,500 square feet of subsiding land within the landward 50-foot RPA on this property, 10007 Sycamore Landing Road. Required mitigation for this amount of impacts to the RPA equals the plantings of seven planting units, which equals seven canopy trees, 14 understory trees, and 21 shrubs. Due to the fact that the RPA is proposed to be disturbed and regraded, the mitigation requirement shall be replanted back in the disturbed area. 
Staff has evaluated the application and exception requests for the addition of fill. This application meets the ordinance conditions in sections 23-11 and 23-14 and should be heard by the board because the addition of fill is not a permitted use. Board may grant exceptions to section 23-7 if the application meets the following five conditions. The exception request is the minimum necessary to afford relief. Granting the exception will not confer upon the applicants any special privileges denied by Chapter 23, Chesapeake Bay Preservation of the James City County Code to other property owners similarly situated in the vicinity. That the exception request will be in harmony with the purpose and intent of Chapter 23 of the James City County Code and is not uh, of substantial detriment to water quality. The exception request is not based on conditions or circumstances that are self-created or self-imposed, nor does the request arise from conditions or circumstances either permitted or non-conforming that are related to adjacent parcels, and that reasonable and appropriate conditions are imposed, which will prevent the exception request from causing a degradation of water quality. Staff has reviewed the application and exception request and has determined the impact associated with the proposal to be moderate for the proposed development. Staff does recommend approval for this exception request, and if the board wishes to approve this request, staff recommends the following conditions be incorporated into the approval. The applicant must obtain all other necessary federal, state, and local permits as required for the project, including an erosion sediment control plan and a land disturbing permit. The submittal of a mitigation plan equaling seven planting units be submitted to the Stormwater and Resource Protection Division, um, subject to change depending on the amount of uh, fill added to the resource protection area at a site meeting later at a later date. That a surety of $3,000 be submitted in a form acceptable to the James City County Attorney's Office to guarantee the mitigation plantings. And this exception request approval shall become null and void if construction is not begun by July 14th, 2022, with written requests for an extension to the exception submitted to the Stormwater and Resource Protection Division no later than June 2nd, 2022, just six weeks prior to the expiration date of this permit. I'll divert your attention to the screen for a brief presentation. Again, uh, this exception request by Harold Breeden at 10007 Sycamore Landing Road for the addition of fill within the resource protection area. Outline in blue is the project area within the Ware Creek watershed. The, the watershed divide being here in purple. Again, this uh, proposal is within the Sycamore Landing Road. The project location to occur behind the existing structure and the topography as it is seen on this site. Um, so, uh, gently sloping back um, towards the resource with the resource protection area outlined here in green on this property. So as you can see, the resource protection area comes up to approximately the back of the house and then juts towards the road from there. Site plan has been submitted. Proposal fill here in this area demarcated in yellow with the area in red being the resource, approximate location of the resource protection area. Cross section of the area um, in question. There's an existing old road um, just down slope of the area. So they're proposing to add fill to the upland area here. Some site photographs of the area that they're um, proposing to add fill to. They intend to spread fill throughout this portion of the, the yard. This photograph um, looking downwards towards the old road and the sequential uh, resource at the bottom of the slope. The main area that I believe the applicant intends to um, refill to be replanted as well. Should the board uh, approve this uh, exception request, following conditions should be met. All other necessary local, state, and federal permits are acquired as they are um, needed, including an erosion sediment control plan and a land disturbing permit. That a mitigation plan consisting of seven planting units be submitted to the Resource Protection Division. That a surety of $3,000 
to guarantee these plantings is submitted in a form acceptable to the James City County Attorney's Office. And this exception request approval shall become null and void if construction has not begun by July 14th, 2022, with written requests for an extension submitted no later than June 2nd, 2022, just six weeks prior to this exception request um, expiration date. Thank you very much. I'd be happy to answer any questions the board may have. I'd like to ask real quick, was there a stated reason for the, for the fill? Uh, the applicant expressed to staff that um, he's noticed subsidence in the backyard. There is some um, removal of dirt. It's hard to say exactly how much, um, but basically it was conveyed that he wanted to retop soil and then replant in this area. Is the soil coming from the next project on the list, the bank grading? Yes, sir. Does your office manage the sediment control plan? You, you will be there with them to be sure that it doesn't keep on washing down the hill. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, staff from our office will review that plan along with the land disturbance permit um, and ensure if this permit were to be approved that the appropriate erosion sediment control measures were in place. Mr. Chairman, um, I'm inclined to support this in part because he's revegetating the, the, the RPA with um, planting units as opposed to what's there now. Um, but I would ask that staff right now doesn't have a very uh, well-defined site plan. Um, I can appreciate it doesn't require an engineer to, we don't require engineer drawings, but at the same time, it would be nice to see a site plan that shows where the plantings are going to go so that once the permit is issued and the work is undertaken, that the end result match what was approved by the board. Yes, sir. And we, um, we can obtain that and then share that with the board as well uh, okay. once it's acquired. Are there any other questions for Mr. Long? If not, thank you. Thank you. And we will uh, now open the public hearing for applicant and public comments. Okay, we will close the public hearing and open for board discussions. And I support Mr. Rowley's suggestion for the plan to be complete before before it's, uh, it's acted upon, absolutely. So if I understand it correctly, Mr. Rodley, you're, you're suggesting that we defer this application? I'm willing to approve subject to the condition that staff be provided with a, uh, the mitigation plan so that he can judge compliance against that plan. that uh, instead of giving an open ticket on it that we need to know what what's going in there if we're going to prove something so I, I concur with the with the comments and um, so long has already said that if they've submitted a uh, whether erosion submit a sediment control plan mitigation plan uh, to you all before uh, they have not for this project as far as I'm aware, however, they would be required to. Okay. All right, are there any other uh, comments? If not, uh, can I have a motion? Chairman, I'll make a motion to adopt the resolution to grant the exception for Chesapeake Bay Board case CBPA 21-0087 at 1007 Sycamore Landing Road subject to a condition that um, they submit a mitigation plan acceptable to staff. Okay, thank you. Mr. Rodley? Yes. Mr. Waltrip? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Apperson? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. The motion carries. So the, the next hearing, CBPA 21-0075, 1006, or correction, um, 10006 Sycamore Landing Road. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Trevor Long, Watershed Planner, here is in CBPA 
21-0075. Mr. Daniel Winall, Water's Edge Construction, has applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception on behalf of Mr. David and Ms. Kim Lambie for encroachments into the RPA buffer for bank grading on property located at 10006 Sycamore Landing Road within the York River watershed. Parcel was plied in 1926, prior to the adoption of the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance in 1990. Total lot size of this property is 1.15 acres, of which 35% is located in the, within the RPA. James City County Wetlands Board approved WJPA-19-0048 for the construction of marsh toast sill with beach nourishment and a revetment on this property. The applicant's proposing a two to one bank grading in association with this living shoreline, equaling approximately 1,000 square feet of fill within the seaward 50 foot RPA. To mitigate for the proposed grading and impacts to the RPA, county mitigation requirements are to revegetate the slope with 33 native shrubs, equaling th three planting units. Staff has evaluated the application and exception request for the bank grading. This application meets the ordinance conditions in sections 23-11 and 23-14 and should be heard by the board because the grading of the bank is not a permitted use and occurs within the seaward 50-foot RPA. Board may grant exceptions to section 23-7 if the application meets the following five conditions. The exception request is the minimum necessary to afford relief. Granting the exception will not confer upon the applicants any special privileges denied by Chapter 23, Chesapeake Bay Preservation of the James City County Code to other property owners similarly situated in the vicinity. The exception request will be in harmony with the purpose and intent of Chapter 23 of the James City County Code and is not of substantial detriment to water quality. The exception request is not based on conditions or circumstances that are self-created or self-imposed, nor does the request arise from conditions or circumstances, either permitted or non-conforming, that are related to adjacent parcels, and that reasonable and appropriate conditions are imposed, which will prevent the exception request from causing a degradation of water quality. Staff has reviewed the application and exception request and has determined the impacts associated with the proposal to be minor for the proposed development. Staff recommends approval for this exception request, and if the board wishes to approve this request, staff recommends the following conditions be incorporated into its approval. The applicants must obtain all other necessary federal, state, and local permits as required for the project, including a building permit if necessary. The submittal of a mitigation plan equaling three permit uh, planting units be submitted to the Stormwater and Resource Protection Division. That a surety of $1,000 be submitted in a form acceptable to the James City County Attorney's Office to guarantee the mitigation plantings. And this exception request approval shall become null and void if construction has not begun by July 14, 2022, with written requests for an extension to this exception be submitted to the Stormwater and Resource Protection Division no later than June 2, 2022, just six weeks prior to this exception request expiration date. Thank you. I'll now have a brief presentation. Again, uh, Mr. David and Ms. Kim Lambie are applying to um, grade a bank associated with VMRC permit number 2019-2163 on property located at 10006 Sycamore Landing Road outlined here in blue within the York River watershed and the Sycamore Landing Road. Aerial photography of the site. Again, there was a shoreline project that did occur on this property and the bank that is in question of being graded. Topography, as you can see, there is a steep um, bluff that, that slopes off down towards the water from the uplands. The floodplain as it affects this property. The resource protection area as it affects this property coming up to about here in green. And the site plan as has been submitted, 100 foot resource protection area to, um, outlined here in red and the divisional um, markers for the property line here in black and the proposed grading in this area here. Cross section of the uh, grading to occur at a two to one slope. Again, this was the wetlands project that was approved in the area that will be impacted within the resource protection area outlined here in yellow. 
Some site photographs. This is standing at the top of the slope. I'm looking downwards. This is an existing path here to gain access to the water. Standing at the bottom of the slope, uh, looking upwards and sideways. And this photograph showing the need for bank grading um, here. There's quite a bit of erosion, and it does highlight the steepness of this existing bank. Again, staff does recommend approval of this exception request, given that all other necessary local, state, and federal permits are required as needed. Then a mitigation plan consisting of three planting units be submitted to the Stormwater and Resource Protection Division. Then a surety of $1,000 to guarantee these plantings is also submitted in a form acceptable to the James City County Attorney's Office. And this exception request approval shall become null and void if construction has not begun by July 14, 2022, with written request for an extension submitted no later than June 2, 2022. Thank you, and I'd be happy to answer any questions the board may have. Mr. Chairman, just curious, this, the revetment that we saw in that cross-section was already approved? Yes, sir. That was associated with the, uh, the WJPA that, was, that came before this board. Thank you. That was the items in yellow? Uh, that was part of the items in yellow. Um, the other part was coupled in with the grading on this, on this bank. So that revetment that's there is uh, that, that core stone revetment is still is was is previously there. It's already, it's already it there. It was approved. I do not believe it is in place at this time. It's still under that that existing. Those pictures permit. don't show anything there at all. Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Long, isn't there a provision in the Ch in the Chesapeake Bay Ordinance for shoreline projects that have already been duly authorized? Not aware of one. Um, however, it could be, could be looked into. Wishful thinking. <laughs> it seems a little bit duplicative. <laughs> I do understand. There are no other questions for Mr. Long. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll go ahead and open the public, uh, open to the public for hearing, or any comments they'd like to make. Evening again, I'm with Water's Edge. I'm the contractor <clears throat> for this project. Um, the the um, the revetment is going to have some fill associated with it, but that's already been approved. So I talked to homeowner into letting us do the uplands because it's as you saw on the drawings, it's it's pretty uh, pretty much a eroded slope. So we've got, and I guess y'all figured out we're generating a lot of <clears throat> fill from the project next door at Mr. Amison's. So it just makes sense to go ahead and slope that bank to a two to one grade, stop the erosion, <coughs> get it stabilized, put some native vegetation on it while we're there. But to your point, I thought that we were allowed to do bank grading in association with a revetment project. I didn't realize we had to get a separate Chesapeake Bay permit to do that. But, um, but so be it. So, but that, that's what we're here for. And questions? Thanks. Thank you, sir. Are there, is there anyone else who'd like to make comment on this hearing? Okay, the public hearing is closed and we'll open to the board <coughs> for discussion. I have no. I'll say no it's a needed to. thing to tie that whole slope in. I mean, it, it makes sense to be able to do that, I would think. Other comments? This time, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution CBA 21-0075. Thank you, Mr. Rodley. Yes. Mr. Waltrip. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Mr. Apperson. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. The motion carries. That completes our public hearings and board considerations. August 11th is the next uh, scheduled Ches. Chesapeake Bay Board meeting. Uh, are there any matters of special privilege? I don't have any. No. So uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll move. Uh, I have one, one last announcement. Just a heads up that the board meeting in August will be held in Building D, which is the building 
um, right in front of this one. I believe they're doing some cleaning of this room, and we've been asked to relocate. Thank you very much. Meeting adjourned.